Okay, so basically the Rothschild family had used the Illuminati to have a strong network already set so they could take over the world in the future. So down the line, the family could take over the world, kind of like a dark prophecy. So they use Adam Weishaupt to set up that group in 1776 and later in 1815 in the Battle of Waterloo, they whisper to their insiders, the people on the outside of the group, you know, the outside of the inside, so to speak. They, but they're still called the insiders because compared to the rest of the population, they're still well connected. They leaked to them that Napoleon had won the battle. So they start selling off their stocks for cheap and they buy them up for pennies on the dollar when in fact England had won the battle. So then we get off into um, the American Civil War in 1861. How they have the French secretly funding both sides. You have the English funding both sides. They're happy at this civil war is going on. And they're pitting each other against each other. Okay, Now, the civil war wasn't about slavery or the Confederates succeeding from the Union as much as it was about bringing in a new world order, creating chaos, and war profiteering. Because people during war, they sell guns, they sell um, a lot of um, ammo and things like this, you know, a lot of uniforms, and they also have loans. So they, what Lincoln wanted to do was introduce these interest-free war bonds, which would cut the bankers out of a lot of money, interest money, during the war. So this is why Lincoln was shot, and this is why the war um, eventually came to an end on our side, because the bankers eventually decided to call the war over. And when they did, you know, Ulysses S. Grant and whatnot declared the winner when he, in fact, wasn't really the winner. The winner was the Illuminati, who had staged this whole war and, and got people killed, kind of like these modern-day eugenicists, which I won't get into very much, but they believe that the world's population is too big, they want to limit it. That's why we have a lot of things like swine flu that are four or five times more likely to go after minorities. That's why AIDS was put in Africa. So they want to get rid of the, a lot of the world's population, the poor whites and the minorities. But anyway, we go into World War I, okay? It's called the Great War, the world to end of all wars. In a way it is, because it's a war, one of the three wars to help bring in the new world order. One of the three world wars that Weishaupt predicted to help bring in the new world order. Okay, remember, they're using monetary means, they're using sex means, they're using violence, and they're staging wars, staging false revolutions and being both sides. You know, they decided that they can't directly control the people, so they'll give them two phony sides, and they'll control both sides secretly. Okay? So, in this war, you have the Triple Entente and the Triple Alliance, you know, kind of like the Axis and the Allies in World War II. And the, what caused this war, it, in, um, uh, it was on uh, June 1914, you know what I'm saying? On the 28th, when Arch Archduke Franz Ferdinand was shot. Um, was shot by a Serbian. Well, this is the story they give us, you know, that he was shot by a Serbian nationalist um, named Gavrilo Princip. And but this is not exactly, you know, the whole story. It goes much more deeper than that. You know, it goes down to the royal family and their petty fights with each other and their petty disagreements. Okay. And um, what this war would do was would be the first of the three major wars and the third one we haven't had yet to bring in their new world order out of chaos but out of orderly chaos because it's secretly orderly <laughs> so just like um when saddam um we brought in weapons inspectors to saddam the austrians demanded to bring in inspectors into serbia you know and they declined and when they declined Aust um austria declared war on them Okay, now this is very interesting, okay? And then they attack the next day, okay? So they declare war on these guys and they attack the next day, okay? All this is staged out from the beginning. We got this guy who gets shot by a Serbian nationalist, so to speak. The next day, um, you know, very quickly things start to happen. Blah, these guys send guys there. They want to send guys there. They, ref they refuse them. Now they declare war on them real fast. Now, all of a sudden, we have a problem. 
because there's alliances to consider. Now, these alliances are kind of complica complex, okay, and it ties into everybody, including America, in a roundabout way, okay, because eventually Russia mobilizes its army, and Germany says, don't do it. And so when Russia um, refuses to listen to them, they declare war on them. The problem is France is allied to Germany and Turkey to, uh, I, mean, I mean, excuse me, France is allied to Russia and Turkey to Germany. So when this happens, these guys get drawn in. And eventually when Germany invades Belgium, Britain gets involved, right? But all these guys way ahead of time, they had planned all these attacks, you know? And then you have these, the smaller countries like Bulgaria and Romania, you know? And um, Romania got on the Allied side and they, they took a lot of beating because they got on our side, you know? And a lot of these small countries, they get crushed. When the big guys will fight, and the small one must suffer, as once been said. And that's true in a lot of these wars. So you have this, this staged war, and all these so-called alliances are the things that come through. But these alliances are more a result of petty disputes between royal families than they are a result of decent reasons. You know, they're not. They're just. They're, they're disputes made up of petty royalty disputes. And these guys are cousins to each other, right? You got Kaiser Wilhelm, his cousin. Okay, is King George of England, and he, and um, this guy named Sar, Sar Nicholas, he's he's related to this guy by marriage, right? Someone in his family is married to that guy, so, and he calls him Nicky, Sar Nicholas. Okay, now Germany, they say they want to bring it, they think it's not their day, and they don't have their place in the sun, as David Carradine says in his documentary about World War One, that Germany didn't have their place in the sun. Interesting how even a guy who died under very suspicious circumstances <laughs> not too long ago, he's going to talk about Germany's um, wants, wanting their day. At least he's honest about that. Now, I don't know if Carradine's in a secret society or not, but it's interesting how he points that out as he's the commentator in his um, the documentary he presents. So, what World War One was, was kind of an open history kind of touches on how it was a dispute between royalty but it doesn't go into detail about the deeper secret societies that surround it that shroud this whole ordeal and how this war is played out in Africa that's what they will, will undermine a lot of these battles that end up getting fought in Africa in these global wars and that's because they want to use a lot of gas and a lot of things there you know they use it in Europe as well but you have to realize that these people draw in the whole world because that's what the idea was from the get-go it was to draw in the whole world it wasn't just to minimize the damage in Europe it was to draw the world into a war and kill as many people as possible and especially certain types of people that's why they, they immediately they target Jews and blah 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 and, and in the concentration camps it comes out that they have blacks in there too etc okay so now you see how World War One ties into this and it goes a lot more deep than that. And in World War II, you have Prescott Bush. He is a banker, and he gets caught under training with the Enemies Act. So you have, like, every once in a while, they do so much dirt, that they're like, okay, we got to bust you guys doing this. And it's just a little snit tidbit. And once you connect them, the dots, you know, the, sometimes it's good people that step up that bust them. Sometimes the bust is just the, the guys being sloppy, and they eventually say, okay, you're too sloppy. We can't cover up for you anymore. And the guy's busted. And they'll either be killed or they'll, they'll, they'll keep their mouth shut and they know that they can. So Prescott Bush gets busted with trading under the Enemies Act, right? Jack Ruby was Bush's head of security, Bush's father, okay? And then George W., our president, our ex-president, that is, that punk, he, <clears throat> he, of course, invades Iraq, whatever, right? These are whole people who are trying to draw in you into a world conflict We're trying to draw in world conflicts and bring in their world order he's trying to start world war three so you see how this guy has history in world war two of manipulating it trying to fund both sides trying to bring in as much death as possible he got busted being the top banker for hitler there's pictures of the bastard on the internet now it seems like we've run out of time for this video and i'll explore more and i'll try to keep it in a nutshell and go into closer to modern times in my next video. Peace out. Mm -hmm.